Hey guys, how's it going? Retro Dave back with another video. First thing I want to mention is you might have realised, or noticed rather, um, that I have actually changed uh, my name, my YouTube name, from Retro Dave Nintendo to Dave's Pinball Arcade. I think it's kind of a bit more with what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so yeah, still Dave obviously, but I think I've just changed the name and changed the logo to kind of be a bit more fitting with with what I'm doing. So kind of a little bit of a mini rebranding if you like, um, but I'm still me, of course. Um, anyway, let's cut right into it. So really exciting video guys today. Um, I've got two pickups, big pickups, machines, two machines in one video. Uh, you know, awesome. I'm gonna shout out to someone as well in a minute um, who made it happen. So also got a few other little bits and pieces that I bought as well. Um, that one, well, one bundle came with the machines and the other thing I've bought is completely separate. It's on the wall next to me here, um, which I bought maybe about a month ago now. Super cool and I think it looks awesome uh, in the room. So let's um, spin the camera around and show you what we've got. Okay guys, so this is the first pickup and it's a Run DMD clock. So it's actually a lot red, more red than it is in the video in real life, if that makes sense. It's kind of almost a bit more washed out in the... Uh, in the camera but it's so cool so this is um basically a dmd clock and it runs pinball animations um mainly all the old Bally williams stuff um but a whole range of games from you know all the animations that come out on the on those machines will go like in a sequence on this so you'll see like a sequence like this and then it will flash the time and it just goes on and loops over there's loads of different ones um but it's really really cool um, I've got this, this has actually come up on eBay, they don't come up very often, um, they're made in like, limited numbers. Um, I think the guy's actually now doing a run of colour ones, um, but they're crazy, crazy money. But I'm quite happy with the red one. Um, I think it's really, really cool. You really can't get the effect, guys, um, with the colouring through my camera. It's actually a lot darker red than what you're seeing um, through the screen. But it's really, really cool. So it's just mounted on the wall. Um, it's, it's running like a Raspberry Pi. I can just kind of get a bit hint of the red then. Um, so it runs on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I don't know how it's all set up, but you know, someone much cleverer than I am has uh, got it all run up set properly. It just runs on a power supply and away you go. So that is the first pickup. So I've had that maybe about a month now. So really happy with that. So it just sits on the wall above my desk where I work. Um, yeah, really, really cool. So I moved my key box. I have my key box up there on the right. I've now moved it to the left. Um, so that's all kind of fits there. Well, okay, so we'll pan around now. So I'm just gonna move over to these two machines first. Um, ones you've already, already seen. So as you know, or you may or may not know, um, I've got White Water on loan. Demolition Man, I picked up maybe about a month or so ago. And then I had Funhouse over here to the left, um, that was on loan. Now, the long story is, before I bought Demolition Man, I had Space Station, and before Space Station, I was gonna buy the game that I've now got on my left. Um, but it, it didn't happen, didn't go through, the, the, you know, it, one, one, one reason or another, um, it didn't go through. And um, so I thought, right, screw it, and um, ended up getting Space Station. So then with Space Station, I got rid of that and bought Demolition Man. And then the game that I wanted originally, um, someone else had one. And uh, we negotiated a deal and I ended up getting that as well. And I couldn't turn it down because um, it's a game that I was looking for for months. And I, I, said, I, I managed to hunt down several people that I know own them. Um, but yeah, people weren't willing to sell them. So when I got approached um, uh, by the person that had it before me, um, saying that they were willing to let it go um, for a price, we negotiate the price, and um, here it is. So I've got it on my left. Now, the funny thing is, I need to say a special thank you to, to Alex, Nintendo Arcade. He um, he kindly wanted to pick the machine up for me, and along with another thing, which is behind me, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so the game, guys, that I'm hyping up is Swords of Fury. Now, 
this just looks the bollocks. I, I love it. I mean, I've not turned it on yet. I'll show you that in a minute. But I mean, I'm not a massive Dungeons and Dragons guy. I love the I love the artwork of Dungeons and Dragons. I love the that kind of theme. But I'm not. I never really played Dungeons and Dragons that kind of thing back in the day. I know a lot of kids in the eighties did, but it wasn't really my bag. But I really love the artwork and the theme. And this game reminds me of like He Man. So let me show you the playfield, guys. It's the bollocks. Now, sorry for the glare. Um, I mean, but look at the playfield. Let me just show you the the main thing. So you've got this like sword in the middle, and when you hit the flippers, the flippers are basically like sword sounds. And you've got like, this castle with like almost like levels on it. Although obviously they're not. It's just how it's printed. But it's really cool. Um, you've got like the guard down in the um. You know, like a well in the middle. You've got this like Balrog thing, like a bat monster thing. This is like the main guy, like on the play field at the back, sorry. The Balrog, I think that's what it's called. It just looks so cool. Um, you know, and you've got like the ogres at the side with like their ball and chain and their nail club and like skulls and stuff like that. It just, it just looks so cool. I just love it. I've never, I never played the game before I got it. Um, same with what I mean, I was sort of bored basically. Um, but I just love the theme. I love the idea of it. I think it looks the bollocks. And you've got like this bridge going across with this, the girl on there with a sword and the flame torch. And you've got this like lion head at the top. And you've got like the targets on the side. You've got, um, just this wicked. And then you've got, if excuse the glare, I'll, I'll show you in depth again with a glass off perhaps at another time. But you've got like a tunnel here and that flies around up the top. And you've got this like diverter. So you can come up here and then the diverter will kick it across here to here, this upper play field. So you've got like another mini play field up here. And the idea is to defeat the, um, like the ogres at the back and you hit those drop targets and they pop back up. So if you can keep the ball up here for as long as you can, then you get some massive points. And what happens is when you hit the targets, the, the better you do, the longer they take to come back up. So you've got more chance of the ball falling down the back. And when the ball does fall down the back, it falls through this tunnel to this flipper. And if, you, if this is lit, you get a chance to flick it back up this ramp and come back round. So if not, and this, this is random, these aren't change through the game. So this one will fire it into, into here, which is the ball lock. Um, and then obviously around here, it will just drop it. If this is on, that means none of these gates are open and the ball will just come straight off the end and just roll straight down. And you've got this little hairpin uh, thing to multiply your points. Um, so back up to the field, the ball will fall down, drop down to here and come down through this little spinner, the little spinners. How cool are they? I just love it. I just love the artwork. I just think it's so cool. And guys, the music on this game is amazing. The sound effects in this game. It sounds like a cross between an old Sega Mega Drive or Genesis if you're in the States. Um, it's like an Amiga 500, that kind of sound. Like that twangy um, electronic sound. It's so good. And after I've put some clips in, or I'll show you gameplay anyway. Um, but it sounds so good. And the uh, cabinet. Um, so it's got like a newer coin door on it, but I have got an original Williams coin door um, to put on that came with it. Um, it hasn't even got the mechs on the back, but um, I think, I don't even know why this is on there, but I did ask if he had a Williams coin door. So well, that's going to go, that's going to go on. It's got four brand new legs on. I have got the original legs, but they're a bit corroded. So yeah, four brand new legs and then you've got the side. Let's pull demo out now so you can kind of see as best as possible. It's in really, really nice condition. And these games are normally wrecked. Normally wrecked, luckily. And you can just see there's like, you can see like the bulge here. So they come with this um, mylar in front of the um, the slingshots here, where the ball suit flings around. And they, they're kind of like pretty standard on this game. But what this game has got, if you can see, Trying to focus this, there's like a, you see that? So what it is, there's actually a mylar, which is like a big plastic protective sheet. It goes all the way around. 
you can see up here, look, you can just see the line. So the whole middle of the play field is protected by this mylar from factory. So this game has survived 32 years of abuse because it's been protected with that mylar. And some of these games don't have that mylar. And normally all this, um, you can see those like, little bubbles, that's from the heat from the incandescent bulbs. I'm, I'm, excuse the glare. Um, but you don't mean really to see that when it's on. But normally all the paint is normally all worn around all these inserts, all around here, all around here. There's normally just black marks and swirls and dents and normally it's just trashed. Um, the outsides aren't protected. You can see that where the paint is aged a little bit, a bit of wear on the inserts and stuff. But if you look how clean it is otherwise, it's amazing, 32 years old. Um, it's been rooted and beaten up in an arcade. This thing has survived. Got one broken plastic there on that corner. Um, but like I say, this mylar has, protect, has saved this play field from being trashed. And like I said, normally these games are trashed. Upper play field isn't protected with mylar. It has on the middle, it's got like a sticker on the middle. There's a big flashing light in there. So you can see it overlaps the edge because normally the paint would wear off all around that edge. It's got one little mark here on that magic. But other than that, honestly, other ones that I've seen, guys, have been wrecked. And thankfully, this one is really a survivor. I mean, the glass is pretty scratched. You can see with how bad the glass is, which really doesn't help. So I could probably do a new sheet of glass. But play field condition on this game is, you know, really, really good. Um, all the displays work. It's got a reproduction um, translite. Again, normally that would be all flaked and just gone, like just disintegrating your hand. But this is really good quality. It's got some colour LEDs in there. I've already changed some of the LEDs um, to my liking. He had like green hair and this was really dark red. I've actually done a mix between white and red, every other light, so it kind of shows that more blue and red, not just red. And I actually, to keep the yellow, I put some incandescent behind Lion Man and in the fire, and behind the ogres as well because before they were just um, blue and it was just too blue. But yeah, I'll turn it on in a second, I'll show you. And I'll show you some pictures before and after as well, like in still. But yeah, I love it, I love this game. I wanna say I wanted this game so bad. I've been looking for it for months and months and months. And then to finally get offered it, I thought I've got to get it. I, I mean, thankfully Gaz very kindly agreed he'd take the funhouse back. I offered to store it for a bit, I could store it. I've got my, uh, my wife's cabin, we can put it in there. But he was, he was absolutely cool with it. He's like, honestly, dude, you can take it back. So he, he was able to take it back, um, which was great. And I could get this in. Um, guys, it's so cool. Let me fire it up. Let me fire it up and um, I'll show you. So it looks like the LEDs are flashing, but they're not. They are now. Right, let me turn the, the light off. Look at that. I think I've got that back glass perfect. Um, like I say before, um, these bowls are all white and really glare bleeding through the black. Same as all up here. These are all white. And again, it was really overbearingly harsh. I stuck a white up on the sword. Again, there's incandescence here for the yellows. And here, even though he's Lion Man's head in the, in the camera shot looks very light. Yeah, see, there you are. I mean, how cool is that artwork, man? I think with the alternate red and white, that pops amazing. It looks so good. 
I'll put in a still of how it looked before. So alpha numeric display, they all work. Again, it looks like it's flashing guys, but honestly it's not flashing in person. Um, so if I say excuse the glare. So inserts are LED. And then the GI at the minute is incandescent, but I'm gonna order some, um, I've actually ordered some Comet Sunlight Bulbs, which will brighten up a little bit. Although it is meant to be a dark game, obviously with the theme, um, it is a little bit too dark. Um, it has already got a couple of comets at the top there to make that light up and a, one in the tunnel here. But I think I'll stick those sunlights in like I have all my other games and they look just so much better. So, how cool is that? How cool is that? Right, I'll set the tripod up, up tripod up, and we'll have, um, we'll have a game. Okay guys, I've got the camera set up over the play field. Um, I've had to put the light on a little bit because I think it'll be too dark for you guys to see what's going on. Um, but yeah, we'll have a quick go and I'll show you, show you what you've got to do. I appreciate you can't see all the displays, but you know, you can kind of see what's happening with the ball and you can hear it, that's the main thing. So the speech is quite loud, the music is a little bit quieter, but we'll see how it comes out. Again, this is like my first couple of games because I've been working on this game already so the idea is you're challenging line man the ball goes to the top so we've lost the ball down the side wow already so you can hear the swords on the Back to the top. Missed, there's two left again. awesome listen to it perhaps i'll insert like a clip of the music separately as well so good wait for a coil to come and stick in. But it does it's playable. <laughs> How cool is that? It's wicked. Right, let's have another go and see if we can lock some balls this time. To lock the balls we've got to get the ball up this left ramp and locks up there. So let's see if we can do that at least. Challenge me. So good. So the ball went down the back that time. There we go, read it. Oh, waste, what a waste. Go for the tunnel. Let's 
so like gothic, eerie, just the music and the sound effects. Like, I mean, it could be eyeballs on something. <laughs> and the sound they make when you hit them is quality. So yeah, I've got a new coil on all the guys. Let me um take this out there. So basically, I'll probably try and put some pictures in. Um, but the this one was doing the same as this one, but I only had one spare coil on coil sleeve. So this side is nice and sharp. This side is like this. It sticks a little bit because um, the plunger is just seized in the in the tube. So yeah, it doesn't play fantastic, but it's playable. Um, so yeah, got some new bits coming in the post for that. So perhaps I'll do a video when I'm tinkering around or whatever. I'll do an update. Okay, so that is Swords of Fury. Now let's go to the to the next edition. Okay, guys, that was Swords of Fury. Um, let's show you the other bits and pieces that I've got with it. So we've got a parts information manual, original. I've got a demolition man manual, original. We've got some new old stock Demolition Man sling plastics and new old stock getaway sling plastics because my one on the getaway is actually broken here um, and they're all like chipped and worn as you can see there's a brand new so yeah new old stock stuff so I bought a few extra bits with it to come with the game so that is awesome now Alex I was talking to Alex on the phone um, as you do well, as we do, and he was on his way to go and pick up a uh, little jammer cab, and he saw that I wanted a little um, a little cab to go in my lineup, to sort of fit next to track and field. And he's like, "Dude, you know, I just bought this cab," and um, he hasn't really got any space for it. He did. He kind of just didn't want it to. He just didn't want to miss out on getting it. I think it was cheap, and I think it is kind of like on impulse. We were laughing on the phone about it. You know, he just couldn't resist it, so he kind of bought it. And he only really wanted the PCB out of it. He wanted the board that's in it. So he offered to sell me this cab. And I was like, dude, that'd be awesome because it'd fit in my room perfectly. So literally this cab appeared to come out of nowhere. I mean, this was always going to be something we were going to arrange to do. But the kind of this cab kind of, yeah, just was offered to me. I was like, yeah, all right, let's do that. And you end up picking up both. So the little cab is this. So it's a little Video World jammer cab. And this was um, on eBay recently, only ended recently. Um, I think it ended like 280 quid. And it came out of an arcade up in Hull, I think, that's just closing down, unfortunately. Um, I said, Alex only wanted the board uh, in that's in there. And um, I said, yeah, this will fit perfect, because look, I've got plenty of space, I can still stand here and play games. I've still got my Donkey Kong, my track and field. And then I thought a little jammer cab, just so I can play like a 60 in one. That's, that's the idea. So I was gonna get like a little cabaret, like a, um, a, Fe a Phoenix cabaret or a Gallagher cabaret, um, because I know they're small. Um, and I thought that would fit here perfectly, but I couldn't turn this down. Uh, you know, it was cheap and I thought, well, it's got a nice little screen. 
And I think to run a 60 in one in that, and I can play like Gallagher, Phoenix, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, all those like classics and stuff on here. And um, yeah, it seemed like a no brainer. So it is in not bad condition at all, to be honest. It's got a few marks out on the side, but you know, it's been kicking around since the late seventies, I think. Um, sparkly, sparkly bezel and control panel. Got a credit button added. Unfortunately, been drilled in, but whatever. Um, no locks, we can pull this open and have a little look inside. Um, as you can see, there's nothing connected there. So this is the board that's in it that Alex wants. Um, I've got to take, cut that out, because as you can maybe see, there's no edge connector. It's been hard soldered in, unfortunately. So I'm just literally gonna clip that off, get rid of it. And I've bought a brand new, um, Brand new jammer harness, guys. So cheap Chinese jammer harness. I don't need all the wires because it's only going to be a single player. So what I'm going to do, my next project, I've never done this before. Is I've never rewired a cab in my life. But I thought, well, how hard can it be? So I'm going to strip this out, all this wiring out here, and just going to rerun it and run a new one. And I've got a little 61 in the post from China. So when that comes, that'll be another little project. So let's fire the cab up. Let me just, uh, excuse the rough and readiness. There we go. Can you guess what it is yet? So it's got a commando PCB in there. So, credit. No, I'm not gonna be able to play this single one gear at all, but. <laughs> Playing it through a camera lens one handed in easy, but yeah. So, cool little jammer cab, guys. Really dinky little monitor in there. Not even sure how big that is, but it's very small. But I think that'd be perfect for a little 61 in there. Other cabs are still going all good. So, I want to say a massive, massive thanks to Alex Nintendo Arcade for bringing both of these games to me, delivered. Um, yeah, really, really happy with that. So if I could have a couple of uh, new additions arrive at once is always uh, always good. So I've been working on this one um, already. I, I'll probably explain that in my next video, what I've done and what I need to do. Um, this, as I said, needs a new harness and I'm waiting for a 61 to turn up. So yeah, a couple of little projects to tinker around with. Um, and that's it, guys, really. That's the latest, the latest update. So thanks for watching. And I shall be back again with another video very soon. Take it easy.